Hi guys, welcome to part 3 of my CNC build. In this video I am going to show you how the C-axis comes together uh, and also uh, how I plan to handle greasing all the linear rails and ball screws in the machine. Uh, as you may know it can be tricky to get in there with a grease gun so I have a plan to fix that. But first off I want to show you some of the parts that make up the C-axis. These are the components that go into the non-moving part of the C-axis. I mean the fixed part that doesn't go up and down. This is mounted to the X-axis. It moves left to right. It's a back plate. It mounts the ball screw mount. It has positions for uh, the said carriages and some other small uh, components. These two are supports for the uh, backplate. They uh, are mounted behind it to decrease flex in the plate. They also act as a shelf for this part. This houses the servo motor and also the uh, uh, cable chain comes in here. Uh, this part is just a um, fixture part. It helps me mount uh, covers, uh, sheet metal covers on everything uh, later. These are the components that uh, make up the moving part of the C-axis. This is the back plate or the, the moving plate. And these are supports. Um, the moving plane plate mounts the, the spindle. It bolts in here using a mount that's provided by the spindle manufacturer. And then there are uh, two slots here to help me align these two supports. Now they are here because I want to to stiffen this plate up a bit more. Um, so they mount like this into the slot and and make they're bolted from the backside and make the plate a bit even a bit more rigid, hopefully. Um, this uh, support also has a couple of mounting points for equipment that I will show you in a later episode. Uh, on the back of the spindle plate there are two slots cut out for the linear rails. Uh, that's to better help me align the rails. One of the slots has an edge that's a reference edge, so I push the rail up against that edge and then I tighten that rail. The other rail is floating freely. It has about one millimeter of um, space on each side of the rail, um, allowing me to, to use the, the referenced rail and measure that the other rail is parallel. So I use, the, I use one rail to check the other rail. Uh, I suppose I could have done uh, both of them having like a reference edge pushed up against, but uh, this just f felt better. There's also a cutout here for the ball nut mount and a small relief cutout up here for uh, the, the um, ball screw mount. It actually sticks out a bit, so I need some, uh, some cutout up here to be able to travel past it. And that's about it. Uh, Nothing really fancy uh, in these parts, I'd say. Um, I'm gonna start mounting the rails and then mount the plate to the to the back plate of the C-axis, and then you can see how everything comes together.
that went a lot better than I expected. I didn't even finish all of my coffee. Um, it's uh, at zero. Of course, I had to touch the dial indicator and now it's not zero. Now it's zero. Um, when I move it, it goes to minus two, minus one, uh, mm, zero, minus one, mm, minus a half, and zero. So that's pretty much dead on parallel, these two rails. Um, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I'm going to mount it to the back plate now. Uh, so you can see the way that everything comes together here. The moving plate is mounted and that makes the C-axis pretty much complete, at least from a uh, mechanical standpoint. Um, sadly, I forgot to record the alignment process of the moving plate, getting it um, square to the table. Um, but what I can say is that it is pretty square. Um, left to right is pretty good, uh, it's within like 5-10 microns, sadly I can't get it better. Um, front to back, however, it has a slight uh, shin up, meaning this lower part actually protrudes a bit this way, so there's an, uh, an angle away from the top, like this. Um, however, I suspect that actually the linear rails, um, and uh, I can't really do anything about that. The good part about it, however, is that when I put weight on it, um, it actually moves in a bit, uh, making it, it actually comes into square, or very close to square. And the spindle motor uh, is actually a pretty heavy thing, so... When I put that in, um, it's gonna reside back to square, which is good. The bad part is that if it can reside into square like that, it means that um, there is play somewhere in this assembly, and that's not good. Um, however, I can't find the play. Uh, well, I, I've tried, but like... The, the black backplate support is rigid and it doesn't flex. The plate itself has some flex, but not that much. Um, the only thing I can think of is the linear rails. Um, and I, 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 I... Like, these high wind rails are probably what you would consider a good buy for a hobby machine. Um, and the, the, the uh, classification on them are decent, uh, or even good for hobby machine use. So I can't really do anything about it, uh, besides maybe buying like Bosch Rexroth real industry grade rails. And, um, I don't have that kind of money, so... I'm going to live with it for now. Maybe I will rebuild it, rebuild it at a later date or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, the last thing I wanted to show you in this video is the, um, uh, the greasing uh, system or whatever you will like to call it uh, for, for the machine. So I'm going to get into that right now. So greasing a machine like this can be tricky if you haven't thought about how to get at the greasing positions for your rails and ball screws. And uh, honestly, I didn't have this in mind when I designed it and I had to make something up to fix this issue because I had uh, ball screws and rails that I couldn't get at uh, with a grease gun at all after the machine is assembled and that's not a good uh, good solution so um, after the fact sort of I designed uh, a solution to uh, to uh, move the greasing points to positions where I can get at them with a grease gun 
and I do that by uh, using compression fittings for compressed air and or sorry push in fittings and four millimeter tubing um, and it seems to be working great uh, it is uh, an afterthought in all honesty but uh, uh, it I'm happy with the end result the c-axis is greased up here on each side for the rails and on the moving plate for the um, a ball screw x-axis has two terminals on the right side of the x-axis that allows me to grease everything there ball screw and uh, rails and for y-axis there are terminals on the left and right side of the machine that allow me to uh, to get at them easily i'm very happy with this uh, even though like i didn't think of it it this is a working solution so um, something to keep in mind if you're designing your own machine, I, I strongly urge you to think about where the standard greasing point for your rails and ball screws would end up. And if you can get at that, or if you need to do something like this to move them to a position where you can get to them. Uh, this is where I end this part of the build. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to start uh, with the electric side of the machine uh, it's going to be uh, quite a lot um, more on that in the next episode as always if you have any comment uh, or question leave them below and um, thank you for watching